get to anything that comes out of that from this already. That is formal. The form is here. The difference between those and this, the one that I learned today, in the course is formal. The formal style of speech is that the form itself uh, doesn't tell you whether it's fallacious or not, right? So for example, this is a party of doing structure. So and so says this, that will not prove that structure. But looking at the structure will tell you whether and it is the best or it is not going to be just whether or not it's so and so as to what the key whether or not it's in the or whether it's biased or all that kind of thing. So it's, it's informal. The content matters in this kind of thing. Uh, so the important thing to remember is, uh, of course, there is no more argument of fallacy. These things are important because they are common. We all logically bad arguments, but psychologically they can be quite persuasive. Psychologically persuasive. False cause, for example, right? We see generalization or something. We have a tendency to make these kinds of So uh, knowing them is important because then you, when you face yourself, you can know how to handle them. And uh, uh, they are in part of the test. I included that in the test. So we need to be able to identify given tests for that purpose, right? What policy is in common sense? Uh, and what? How are they that is in common sense? So that's just to keep in mind when they teach tests, uh, keep in mind uh, after they have heard from them. Uh, can I now ask, do I now understand the truth of policy? Uh, can I explain it? Am I going to recognize this, this when I confront it with what? Right? Can I evaluate the case of keeping my mind? So uh, I want the first group to start. I think you can just come up here and uh, do that. Uh, introduce yourself first. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, okay. So I know you are teaching, so the most go last this. But don't go beyond, people go beyond uh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes is max. Don't go beyond. Yeah. Okay. And of course, if you have questions, please ask. And at the end of the presentation, I think they will give you a kind of quick, either using a whole or some other platform. Uh, I want to go about the presentation. It's fine, but it's good. But it has to answer Legitimate as well. 
then lastly, the claim must be agreed among experts within the field. So if any of the conditions not met, it will be considered as positions appeal to authority, which means it's a weak argument and we shouldn't rely on it. So here are some examples of legitimate appeal to authority. So I'm going to show you in the wall. So for US Department of Health and Services, they claim that smoking causes cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung cancer, and many other diseases. Therefore, smoking is bad for health. Then other Einstein claim that laws of physics are the same for all non-accelerating observers in the theory of relativity. Therefore, the speed of light within a vacuum is the same no matter the speed at which an observer travels. So lastly, the Dr. Vivian Tan, the head of dental department at San Jose Hospital, recommends that I undergo a VA surgery to remove my wisdom tooth because I'm very scared of the procedure. Therefore, a GA surgery will be a better option for me. So all these are examples of legitimate appeal to authority. So let's zoom in to example three, and then we see how it actually meets the six condition. So for this shirt, Firstly, a uh, relevant expert in this case is dental specialist. Dr. Tan is identified to be the, de the head of dental department at San Jose Hospital. So she is a relevant identified expert. To be qualified as the head of dental department, she should be objective. So recommendation is within her expertise and dental is a legitimate area. Sorry. Involved. Yeah. So uh to be oh yeah. Mm, yeah. So dental is a legitimate area of expertise and there is a general agreement in the field that GA surgery is to be recommended to people who are very scared. So we can conclude that all these conditions are met, so it is a non malicious appeal to authority. So here are some examples of so moving on to like some examples of patient appeal to authority. Here are some examples which I'll be going through them one by one in a while. So for Michael Jordan, as for the first example, for the first example, Michael Jordan says that cereal is what he eats every day for breakfast. Therefore, cereal is the best way to start the day. So you can see, right, the relevant expert here is a dietitian, but Michael Jordan is identified to be a basketball player and a businessman. He is not an expert in nutrition. So, uh, his personal, bi personal preference is likely to be biased as well. Recommendation is not within expertise, means he's not a relevant expert. Then, dietitian is a legitimate area of strength. Area of expertise. Then it is agreed among dietitians uh, in the field that cereal brings essential nutrients for breakfast. So it is one of the best ways to start the day. So you can see only conditions 1, 3, and 4 are not met. And because of these conditions not met, it is considered a condition of appeal to authority. So next, uh, so when uh, conditions when conditions one and four are not fulfilled, this is considered this is considered the typical uh, type of appeal to authority in this condition. This is known as the appeal to unqualified authority. What it means is very simple. It's just that the claim is either not made by someone as relevant, like a relevant expert, or the claim is not made within the person or organization's area of expertise. So they are not qualified to make this claim. So their reliability in regards to the claim falls. And reliance upon the claim of such person or organization will become malicious. So we know the example two. We know the example two. A professional home to master claims that mirrors in the bedroom should not face the bed. Therefore, I should not put any mirror facing the bed. So let's test. So the relevant expert in this case is a feng shui practitioner. And in this case, the feng shui master is a relevant expert 
because Wendy's is a, like a US breakfast cereal and that is featuring prominent athletes eating it. So they try to say that because uh, Wendy's is someone that uh, the champion ate, ate so we should eat Wendy's. And for example 3, it's a classic example for Ben Wagon. Like during the obstacle course, they don't believe that going left will be get them out of the maze, but everyone thinks that you should go they should go right, that's why they don't go with the group. So it's like the majority think that uh, they they should go right and you should go right too. This is a classic thing that we always do. Like under like FOMO in in a real life situation where your friend tells you to do something and everyone do it, then you do it also. So there will be there are also the non fallacious hype where it's a field that is not it's not irrelevant because what most people believe does in fact determine what is true. Some of the few things that you can take note is their general general usage of words, standard use of symbol, grammar. But the thing is you have to take note of the number of person who believe a claim can be put can because it can be a probable evidence for the truth or conclusion. But without further information about the case in point, the number of person cannot be directly related to the truth. So these two are some of the examples of non fallacious type uh, appeal to popularity example. Like for the first, because physicians has the knowledge of high fat diet, hence it is not really a non fallacious a non fallacious appeal to popularity. <coughs> and for example two, because in Japan bowing is an important etiquette that is learned from a young age. And, it can, and bowing can be used to signify emotions, including appreciation, appreciation, respect, remorse, or gratitude. Hence, it is not a it's a non fallacious appeal to popularity. So next up, I'm going to give you some of the example, like more example and a more explanation for appeal to popularity. So this is the first one. Okay. So it's like you just in general for this whole passage. This governor is trying to argue that every businessman present a uh, pre present gift to public official in return in helping them. Because every businessman do that, therefore public official acceptance of gift is an acceptable practice. And you know this is fallacious because even though that many politicians accept gift from business does not make the practice acceptable. This is a form of bri bribery, and then you know that it's fallacious. So. For the second one, uh, I think it's very common that you know during your underage, uh, not when you're not legal, then you start drinking because your friend tell you to do so. So this is a considered a fallacious appeal to popularity. So like my friend argued that because majority of teenage drink regardless of the law of legal age for alcohol consumption, therefore it is okay to drink. You know that is not true because the, even though that there's a lot of your friends or other people drink, it does not necessarily mean that it is okay to drink when you're not legal. So for example three, okay. so like example me, I want to get a Dyson vacuum cleaner because I heard many good reviews from other people who bought it. But for this case, it is a non fallacious appeal to popularity because each individual, individual here have their reason in making that claim that Dyson uh, vacuum cleaner is good. Each review is independent to each other because I only hear review from people who buy it and not from those who did not buy it. So I only hear from those who buy it that like my friend bought it and she gave me the good review. And under that influence, I that give me the decision to get it. So for the fourth, I think when I, I'm not very sure for you guys, but when I'm young, my parents try to ask me to drink ch chicken essence every day because they think that chicken essence make me smarter. Uh, but for this this type of argument for this type of argument is actually a fallacious one because even even though it's true that maybe there's a few kids score better when they are they when they drink chicken essence, but is there's no there's no re re correlation between them drinking uh, chicken essence and getting a good score. And, and it, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that drinking chicken essence will make you smarter. And lastly, uh, this is one of the classic ones. So it's, uh, this is a fallacious appeal to popularity when you majority buys a house because it's the best investment, therefore you should buy a house. 
this is common, common like argument between people whether thinking that buying a house is a good investment or not. But you know, this appeal, uh, this is fallacious appeal to popularity because ev simply because everyone thinks that buying a house is the best investment, you should buy. But you know that buying a house is to have a roof over your head, and in fact, actually, that is a terrible investment. So these five examples is just like a common. A real life example that you can face every day, like a situation, so that you actually next time when you bump to have such situation, you can think about how actually is this fallacious or is this not fallacious appeal to popularity. So next, I'm gonna pass it to Min Kui to talk about appeal to ignorance. Uh, 
and struggling to complete the proposal. So this is actually a feeling of popularity because um, the, the area is struggling to complete is the evidence given to why the deadline should be extended. So this is a case of popularity. Next question is, identify the type of fallacy in the group. So you can read this argument and see if it's due to authority, popularity, or ignorance. Yeah, this is an appeal to popularity because the the premise given for why algebra is useless, why we should not take algebra in a university is because everyone, most people think that algebra is useless, but in fact it is actually not. So this is an appeal to popularity based on the evidence given in the argument. We move on to question five. Identify the type of fallacy in the following. So you see if it's a piece of authority, popularity or ignorance. Thank you. 